Hello and welcome to worship here with the congregation and friends of Aberdeen St Stephen's Church online. We cannot yet meet together in the same building, but on this Remembrance Sunday at a time when we need one another so much, we invite you to join in worship and to remember those who, in times of war and conflict, have given their lives for our freedom and peace. We will observe a two minute silence at 11 a.m. in their memory. We have come knowing that God can hear us all and can blend even distant voices into one song of worship. So let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together. to worship this morning comes from Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 161, O God, our help in ages past. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have made us in your image, but we have chosen to stray from your path. We turn our backs on your way of love, and we forfeit peace in our efforts to rule in your place. In our greed and selfishness, we grab all that we can, so often at the expense of our brothers and sisters. Human dignity is crushed, battle lines are drawn. 
and we take up weapons against one another. Forgive us our sinfulness, O God, and restore us in your sight as we gather to remember those who paid the ultimate price. May we honour their memories as we remember too the futility and the true price of war. Amen. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for the country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all those who have lived and died in the service of mankind. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not be them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious God, open our hearts to you today as we come to bring you our worship. We are living in a world full of uncertainty, where rules and regulations are changing frequently, where guidelines are not the same for all, and confusion seems never far off. Enter our hearts, O God, and bring us peace there. Enable us now to shut out the noise of the world just momentarily, and let us concentrate our thoughts on you. Holy God, teach us to be still. As we sit before you now, encourage us to think only of you. Help us to know your presence around us, your care surrounding us, your love enveloping us. Wrap your arms around us and let us find refuge in you. Hold us tightly in your embrace as we allow the tensions of the world to leave us for now. Creator God, you made the world and declared it to be good. When we look around, let us see what you see. Open our eyes to the worth of our brothers and sisters across the earth. Teach us to value the diversity in the work of your hands. No two people alike. No two snowflakes the same. No two flowers identical. Help us to see that we each have different ways of understanding. Some of us think in words and others in images. Some of our ideas are concrete, while others may be abstract. Even our ways of understanding you, O God, vary from one to another. Call us away from believing that we have all the answers, that only our way of living is the right way. In our time of worship today, open our ears to your word. Inspire us to find new ways to be your children, together with all your children across the earth. As we bow before you in homage, purify our hearts. Enable us to set aside all unworthy feelings of pride and self-righteousness. Let us see ourselves more clearly, more humbly, as part of something so much bigger than our own little corner. And so teach us to live for others in the way your precious Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin, the foreigner stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is stilled. 
On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The second reading for today comes from the book of Revelation, in chapter 22, and that's verses 1 through 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the, lamp, the light of the lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we will sing hymn 721 from CH4, We Lay Our Broken World. Gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. 
But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even ta the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Thanks be to God for his holy word. To his name be all praise and all glory. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it seems strange to be sitting at home on Remembrance Sunday. For decades, the tradition has been for people to meet at local war memorials or in places of worship, to pay our respects and express our gratitude to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Those men and women who have given their lives in the service of their country. Those who have gone into battle to protect the freedom of the folk they have left at home. Those who have made themselves available to take on supporting roles in field hospitals and many other essential facilities that provide backup for the servicemen and women on the front line. Every year for decades, in sunshine or rain, in calm breezes or in blustering winds, we have met to give credence to those four simple words. We will remember them. 2020 has been a strange and difficult year. It's been a year which few of us would have considered possible, even in our wildest imaginations. It's been a year of the stuff that sci-fi novels and comics were made of in times not so long gone by. Who would have dreamt that a virus would keep families apart, close businesses, stop hospitality, shut theatres, interrupt education, overwhelm our health services and, yes, prevent us from meeting to worship God and pay our respects to the fallen and injured servicemen and women of our country. It seems our world has been turned on its head. We can never again take for granted those things which we thought of as commonplace and ordinary. We found ourselves stopped in our tracks by an invisible microscopic enemy. This is not an invader which we can round up and see off our land. This is not an opponent we can head off at the pass and send home with its tail between its legs. An opponent we can face with guns and bombs and bullets. And yet we are at war. We are fighting for life as we know it, for all that we value and hold dear, just as our service personnel have done for us in the past. We are locked in battle with an adversary which has no limits, no moral values or ethics which will prevent it from forcing its way forward. We are at war with a force of nature. Is it right on this Remembrance Sunday to compare the battle against COVID-19 to the wars and the conflicts in which our country and the Commonwealth were engaged? Well, it's not a straightforward analogy 
as the Bishop of Paisley was reminded just a couple of weeks ago when he suggested lifting all restrictions for Christmas. This is not an enemy with whom we can negotiate even a temporary ceasefire. Human adversaries may agree to a few hours of respite, but negotiating skills are not contained in this virus's toolkit. A virus can only push on relentlessly attacking, laying waste and mutating to survive against anything we might throw at it. Perhaps the real difference between this battle and those which have been fought by millions of brave people in the past is that this is a battle which ought to be uniting all of us. This really is a world war. But rather than the world fighting against itself, the world has found itself with a common enemy. At no time in the past has there been a similar situation where the entire planet has been so dramatically affected by one such a powerful force. We are all at risk from COVID-19 and may continue to be at risk well into the future. Today, of course, we honour not only the servicemen and women of our own country, we think too of the price paid by those who stood alongside us in conflicts. Where would we be without the support and strength of our allies in times of adversity? And this is where the comparison between military battles and the current battle with COVID-19 can teach us valuable lessons. Our service personnel and those from other lands did not put their lives on the line exclusively for those they'd left at home. They did so for the good of their allies' loved ones too. We have so much to learn from those who over the decades have set aside their own comforts for the good of all. The people who followed orders, regardless of the unhappiness of being separated from their families. They may have felt the desire to grumble at the effect this had on their relationships, but they knuckled down and followed through. And those we honour today were the ones who did not make it home. The people who lived on reduced rations, there was no andrex in the trenches. Food supplies were short, with many caught in situations where nothing got through. Lives were put on hold. Many who were in education or apprenticeships and full-time employment found that their training and their livelihoods were lost. Some returned too disabled or mentally distraught to ever work again. These are the people we remember and honour today. And these are the people from whom we can learn so much. This Remembrance Sunday in the midst of a global pandemic, we have the greatest opportunity to unite under a common banner of humanity. We've seen something of this already in campaigns such as that to support the NHS workers and those in carers' roles. We have seen glimpses of unity in the extension of the services of food banks and the increased donations they're receiving, as well as in local schemes, many through churches, where people are going out of their way to look after their more vulnerable neighbours. And we need more of these. We have to be prepared to sustain our efforts to protect everyone from the relentless onslaught which we are facing from a common enemy. Yes, it's exhausting. Yes, it seems like an endless effort. However, may I suggest that it seems very little when held up against the ultimate sacrifices made by those people we honour today.
we are at a crossroads, not just locally and nationally, but internationally. We have here an opportunity to bring people together in an effort to protect each other. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that all nations will sign up for this. But that does not mean that we as Christians are at liberty to simply not try. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. That puts the onus firmly on us to take those first steps, to reach out into the world and make every attempt to live peacefully with others, and to work and pray for the good of those people that we may never know. When in other times we have attended services in churches and at local war memorials, we have all, I'm sure, taken time to read at least some of the names inscribed on the memorial stones there. For the vast majority of us now, they are the names of people we have never known. And that's an important point, because those who gave their lives gave them not only for their loved ones, but for generations of people to come whom they would never know. Servicemen and women do not give their lives so that war and conflict will continue. They make the ultimate sacrifice in the hope that one day the world will live at peace with itself. It's hard to see COVID-19 in any positive light. It's a virus, no more and no less. We cannot give it human characteristics, emotions or intelligence. It does not set out to cause harm. It doesn't hate. It cannot agree a ceasefire. However, we as human beings can take the decision to turn the situation in which we've found ourselves into an opportunity for good. We can choose to love. We can choose to help. We can choose to make sacrifices for the good of all. And I do mean all. Jesus told his disciples, If you love those who love you, you what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. In the battle against oppression, military personnel are called to do their duty towards their country and allies. As Christians, we too are called, not to arms in the military sense, but into the battle against all that is evil, all that attempts to thwart love, all that goes against God's will for his creation. God wants his children, all his children, to experience life in all its fullness. The reading from the book of Revelation spoke of the tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. As Christians, we look forward to that day, a day when there will be no more war or conflict, no more poverty and mourning, no more viruses and death. That is the promise we find in the birth, life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's in, it is a promise which has been echoed by the sacrifice of those who stood firm against oppression and hatred. It's our responsibility to ensure that their sacrifice was not in vain and only a true and lasting peace between all people will provide 
a fitting tribute to them. So in the days that lie ahead, let's each of us give the best we can to make the peace that they fought for a reality. Let's undertake to work together. And let's use this unique opportunity that we have been given to bring God's world back into a united whole, as is his will. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. Amen. It was a war to end all wars. Not sure now to which war that referred, but it was not. Wilfred Owen wrote, not so much of war, but the pity of war. His words too have fallen on deaf ears. So today we remember the fallen. It is right and good that we do. But is that the best we can do? Remember? What about the promises extracted and made? What of the lessons learned? What of the indescribable tragedy and loss? Are those that cost simply to keep mounting? Will peace forever involve violence? Is any other option merely the stuff of dreams? The machinery that maintains a warring nation in a warring world seems to have all the power, while the Prince of Peace waits on the sidelines, pierced by every bullet, shocked by every shell, rocked by every love he grieves, weighed down by every investment made in destructive forces, while children go without food and families live in graveyards. How can we remember the fallen with the resolve they deserve and commitment that we will find another way? A way to honour the dead and live in the peace for which they fought and learn compromise and sacrifice that costs much less than life, yet leaves love that lasts forever. Our next hymn is number 710, I Have a Dream a Man Once Said.
Let us pray. Living God, today we have gathered to remember, to remember again the awful cost of war and conflict, to remember the millions of people who have given their lives for the cause of freedom. We remember their courage and heroism in battle, the fear and pain of those waiting at home, the tragedy and the grief when they did not return. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Living God, we remember this and so much more as we count the true cost of war and conflict. We pray for those who still mourn loved ones, those whose lives are still marred by war, all who are scarred in body, mind or spirit, all whose lives can never be the same again. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Living God, we remember too those who work and strive to establish and maintain peace. Governments and world leaders, United Nations, peacekeeping forces, diplomats and negotiators, pressure groups and ordinary people. All who, in so many ways, endeavour to promote peace and harmony throughout our world. We pray your blessing on all who work with victims of war and conflict, helping to rebuild communities, to heal scars, creating opportunities where they can for some kind of normality to be restored to broken lives. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We pray today for all servicemen and women who stand for freedom and peace. We remember the true cost of war, the real price of peace counted in human lives. Help us to remember, not just today, but to go on remembering tomorrow and every day, and to do all in our power to work for the peace of your kingdom here on earth. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn 707, Healing River of the Spirit. <laughs>
I'm sure you'll join me in thanking all who've contributed to our worship this morning. And thank you too to all who've contributed painted stones and colouring pictures of poppies to the display on the front steps of the St Stephen's Church building on Powys Place. If you're in the area, you may like to take a stroll past and see their work. It'll be there throughout the next week or so. Please feel free to add your own contributions if you wish. But we'll be back with you here online next Sunday at our usual time. Let's join our voices now and sing hymn number 192. All my hope on God is founded. We have met to remember. Now we return to our communities to love our God and to serve his people. To serve our God and to love his people. And as we go, may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen.